So here's, this is poo. This is like picked off poo. And then we've got clean bean. <sighs> Nothing tastes better than poop. You know what it sounds like? <laughs> I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Twenty countries later and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. Okay, welcome to the mess. What's happened down here, Ben? Playing with shit all day. Why didn't you film it, dude? Shit typically doesn't go viral. I think it does. It's viral shit. No, this is not viral shit, man. The coincidence is that I was using this toilet and I ended up plugging, but it wasn't really my fault. So the shit is literally the shittiest job on the boat and, whew, head rush. What do you think, you're not gonna poop anymore? Some boats, they do this thing, it's called a backstroke. Apparently it works. Yeah, Does we don't need toilets. Doesn't clog your toilets, you don't need a toilet. Just go for a swim. <laughs> I haven't quite mastered that one, haven't even tried that one, but you know. Drop the kids off at the pool? Comment below if you, you know, have any experience with that one. Be interested to know your techniques. Somehow or other, I managed to get out of it. Pretty much always. <laughs> so I feel a bit like a princess, but I'm gonna make him breakfast and, uh, you know, playing with shit in the morning. Nothing better. It's not very often you use a hair dryer on a boat. And it certainly isn't often you use it for your hair. But the fridge, the fridge gets the hair dryer treatment every now and then. And something's up with our fridge, man. We need help. This is getting bad. We're in Madana, we're at Madana Bay Marina, which is a pretty small marina, but they have these mooring balls, a few of them, and uh, we're planning on leaving Nahoa here. We have to get out of Indonesia. Every time we leave the boat, even if we leave it on a mooring, and it's known to be a good mooring, we always check it, because it could be that they only check them once every three months or whatever. It's always good to check your moorings. We've heard horror stories of people floating off and boats wrecking on reefs and all sorts of awful things that can happen if your mooring ball kind of disintegrates while you're not here or while you're sleeping. How's it look, Ben? Yeah, it's a rope that goes down to like a concrete block and then there's like... Is there a chain? There's two attachments down there. Metal loops coming out of concrete block and then there's chain attached to those, attached to the rope. Okay. I mean, it's pretty easy to tell if that mooring's ghetto, like. Uh, it's still a good idea to always check it before you leave your boat for an extended period of time. And if you're just pulling in for a couple nights and it's sort of a, you know, not maybe the most, what would you call it, reliable source that's put in the uh, mooring ball, or if it looks a bit old when you pick it up, just back down on it. And if you break free, go find a different one. Probably the biggest thing is just, uh, wrench on it hard with the boat, like back down on it really hard and if it breaks, oh, well, there you go, you got your answer. <laughs> our Indonesian visas had run out, forcing us to leave the country, but on our way back in, we had to transit through Bali, giving us the rare opportunity to do the first bit of land travel in ages. <laughs> we're here in the car with Wyan and Andre and Wyan and Andre are taking us uh, to where we're staying next and we're going to Ubud and then we're going up to 
Tagalalang, Tagalalang, and then Saratu. To a small village, right? Is it small village or big village? Small. Small. Yeah. And we're staying somewhere around there, but we don't know. And we're wondering where we're gonna stop on the way, and we have no idea. Right now, we're not moving hardly at all, so we got a lot of time to decide. So what's your name again? What? Wayan. Wayan Bayu. Wayan, the first name in Bali, because uh, we have a uh, lot's name. Yeah. Wayan, and then Kadek number two, yeah. and Ketut number three. But the first name Wayan, the first boy, yeah. second name Bayu. Nice. I'm sorry about my language. It's very good. <laughs> language is excellent. What's Bayu. your preference? Wayan or Bayu? Bayu. Bayu. Yeah. Okay. Andre from Java, Bayu from Bali. I'm religion Muslim. Yeah. Islam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But eating pig. <laughs> This is so nice. <laughs> so it's 80% Balinese religion and 20% Muslim. Muslim. Yeah, here. Muslim, Hindu, Catholic, Christian, Buddha. and Buddha. Buddha. And Buddha. Yes. Buddha. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's just very different in Bali as compared to the rest of the country. Because normally when you come arrive in a village, you hear the mosques and it's very, it's very predominant. And here it's very different. We're going to check out some black coffee. Oh, look at this thing. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. So Bali is known for their coffee. They grow a lot of coffee here. There's a lot of volcanoes here. And uh, yeah, there's this one coffee they make. It's like requires that this animal poops it out. Oh, here they are. Oh yeah. So what are these things called? In Bali, they're called luak. And they're a nocturnal animal, so they're really only awake at night. What do they do? So they're all sleeping. They eat the, the full bean and then they poop them out. <laughs> There's actually a reason for this. The enzymes in their digestive system breaks down some of the coffee or some part of it, so it makes it taste a lot better. And they're just a lua. This one, they're already they're finished, yeah? Yeah. So how do you do it? You roast and it? Roasting. They, they roast it over an open fire over here. This is the traditional process. Then they pound it with the mortar and then they sift it so you get the fine coffee grounds out and this is the traditional way of making it. Pretty cool, eh? One to two hours they have to roast it. This is from the lua, from the poo. That's poo? Yeah, this one the poo, this is the oven. Can I hold it? And the fillet, and the bin here, and the clean. clean That's bin. clean. Yeah. So you take the poop, so this is luak poop. I don't like poop that much. And then you have to take it apart because it's all like pooped together. And then you gotta pick it apart and pick off the shell of the bean. And then it comes out and you get this, this is the bean. And then they clean them and they end up like cleaned. So here's, this is poo. This is like picked off poo. And then we've got clean bean. Crazy, hey? Let's go drink some poo. Suksuma. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> By you. Yeah. You have to listen to it. What does it sound like? <laughs> you know what it sounds like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I <don't> remember. <laughs> <laughs> the animal, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does it really sound like that? Yeah, it sounds like farts. Does it taste like first? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it does cut the bitterness, so I'll have to say that, but I wouldn't say it's like, you know, I just don't know. <laughs> it tastes like coffee. <laughs> Not like poop? Not like poop, no. But I think the bitterness is cut, which is kind of nice when it's a, a strong black coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the animal or the... Doesn't smell like poo. Sounds like poo. Tastes like coffee. We also got a, a flight of testers. Now this is called... This is called mangosteen pearl. It's good against cancer, eye, skin. It's against aging. It's good for dental. Um, hold on. Hold on. It's against stress. It's good for digestion. It's good for vitality in men and even prevents prostate cancer. I think I should drink it all. 
Tastes like five cent candy. <laughs> Mm, I should eat more five cent candies. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the red ginger tea. It's actually just like ginger tea. Be besides being able to keep you warm, which is, you know, a plus when it's like 30 degrees, it can relieve sore throat, asthma, blood launch, which I'm not sure what that is, and boost the immune system and prevent colds. So it's pretty good. Ginger tea is good for you. And it tastes really good. I recommend this one. Why am Bayou is going to sing for us. Sing for us. Right? Okay. Okay. I'm ready. I'm from Bali, but I'm singing the <laughs> China. China's language. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you need to be